This thing is stuffed with seafood. You can have this. How you call the crab the, hand? The, the cloth? Cloth. Ah, the cloth. Our best ever Cuba food tour started on the west coast in the famous city of Vinales. Yeah. Where we stuffed ourselves with their unique take on pork lechon. Oh my lord. Oh yeah. Today, we're headed to the big city, Cuba's capital, Havana. Welcome to Havana, city of 2.1 million people. Today, we're on the hunt for some street food. By my side, Cuban native and longtime friend, Oro <laughs> Padron. That's right, we're here in Havana. And why does Sonny have the cool car and I get... Today, we're on the search for street food in Havana. I've been told, don't expect a lot. There's uh, certain cultures that are hardcore street food cultures, like Vietnam. Woo! In certain places, not so much. Maybe they're more in these places called paladeres. What's that? I bet Oro could tell me. Paladar is a family-owned restaurant, but at the same time, any restaurant that is independent. Let's check out the food, let's have fun, and let's see if me and Sonny can handle a full day of Cuban street food. No, 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 no. Street food in Havana is about simplicity, being creative, and utilizing affordable ingredients that are easy to get. Here in El Cristo Park, one food vendor plays by these exact rules. At home, he's baking up dozens of these, his own creation. Then he hits the streets and starts to sell. Sir, how long have you been selling food here? Casi, almost six years. How long does it take to sell out usually? Two hours, with what? confidence. He's like, this is coconut, the one with the texture like that. And this is guava with cheese. Can I try this one with the cheese? Yeah, yeah, let's do it, let's do <laughs> you, it. Like, you certainly can. So it looks like a biscuit, some bread with some jam, and some cheese on top. Yeah, and this is like a biscuit with coconut on top. What kind of coconut? We call it coquito. What they do is like they boil coconut, sugar, cinnamon for uh, half an hour until that everything evaporates, and this is the result of that. Ah, it's a coconut and cinnamon reduction. Or amplification, depending how <laughs> you look. <laughs> let's try it out. Oh. Hmm. I like it. It takes some getting used to. It's kind of a dry biscuit, and then it's like, okay, oh no, there's some jam on there. And then you're like, wait, is that cheese? That is cheese. I want to see which one I like let's, more. Do you want to switch? Let's switch. This one's better though. What's your thoughts? I'm looking at your face. I still like it that more. Yeah, but what are your thoughts on that? I like this. I love that. <laughs> this I is love like my love. When you tell your friend they should date somebody, and they're like, tell me about them, and you're like, <laughs> they're nice. They're pretty. <laughs> I got that treatment a lot in high school. <laughs> Just down the street, a fruit cart has caught my eyeballs. Do not tell me this is an avocado. That's an avocado. Are you kidding me? Yes. Look at this. I've never seen an avocado this That's huge. That's an avocado. Yeah. I think no. I remember you telling me a long time ago. Yes. Like, we have avocados this big, yeah. like a watermelon. And you were like, no. Not possible. Yes. Okay, right here, there's a special okay. machine. I want to see this at work. Can we try it out? Yes, it's super easy. You just need to, like, rotate. Okay, yeah. I can handle this. Yeah, you got it. Look at that. You got it. And it's all the way Snake off. Snake skin, you see? We got it. You see how long? It looks like grapefruit texture inside. Now we gotta taste it. <laughs> oh, it's good. It's sour, but it's good. It tastes like an orange. Actually, orange used to be bigger here in Cuba. We used to produce a lot of orange. Right now, I think the production came down and the quality also came down a lot because the land hasn't been taken care of as well as before. That's why we don't have better quality of orange. But there was a time that this was a very important part of the Cuban economy. Oh, it's good. It was succinct. It was a little sad, too. That's Cuba. But contrast, that's, brother. That's reality. Yeah, contrast. Yeah. To bring me up from Oro's sad fruit trivia, a oh, much-needed yeah. sugar rush, Cuban sidewalk churros at Churros Locos, the most local stall you'll find in all of Havana. This is Churro Evolution. Eres perfecta mujer, de la cabeza a los pies, tú pasas de mi nivel, tú tienes el piquete. Check it out, man. We're just standing on the street eating a churro. You know about churros, right? Yeah, invented in Cuba. Nope. No. Mexico? No. Nope. It comes from Spain. Cuba has a lot of Spanish tradition. That's why we inherit the churros in our culture as well. Cheers. Cheers. 
It looks like a cactus, isn't it? Maybe that's why people think it's yeah. from Mexico because yeah. it looks like a cactus. That's a good churro. It's a good churro. I like that. Like me, it has some imperfections. Like some parts are fat, some are thin and crispy. Do you notice what is inside of the churros? It's a condensed milk. Condensed milk. You know I love condensed milk. Yeah, it's super sweet. It's really sweet. In this case, they put inside of the churro, which is good mixture. They're building on what the Spaniards started. Mm -hmm. Originally, it wasn't stuff. You see? Mm. Evolution. I love it. Now, one of the most unlikely non-Cuban Cuban foods you'll find in Havana. Dude, this is a pizza. It's a real pizza. Pizza shops are everywhere in Havana, and with good reason. Every single street food that we met, they have something in common. They have really few elements. Food shortages are not uncommon here. 70 to 90% of the country's food is imported. After the 60s, when we have a huge crisis, we have to create food that is simple, easy to make, and really hard to get wrong. So, if you're selling ham sandwiches and you run out of ham, you're out of luck. But pizza? Pizza only really requires four ingredients. Water, flour, tomato sauce, and cheese. Every Cuban pizza is a personal pizza, made for you and only you. Toppings range from ham to sausage or even hot dogs, but the way they eat it is a style all its own. You flip it like this. Like a taco. Exactly. Let's, Let's go right. for it. It's rich. It's super doughy. I love how doughy it is. Is that hot sauce? It's just covered in like a sour hot it's sauce, sour not even too. tomato sauce. Yeah. yeah, this is good, dude. Actually, this is something that people eat it eight in the morning. It's just quick, easy, and you get filled and get going. Very nice. This is where Havana goes to chill on weekends. John Lennon Park. In the corner, a government-ordered statue created in his honor in the year 2000. This is kind of baffling, considering the Beatles' music was banned in Cuba when the band was most popular a decade prior. These days, a more culturally liberal Cuba blasts music of all kinds from this park, luring in locals who might throw back a drink or grab some food. What do we have right here? So right here we have pan con croqueta, which means pan is bread. Croqueta, it comes from French, from croquette. That's the croquette. Right, it's like seasoned fried mashed potatoes, basically. Yeah. Oh, it's very nice. And then this is the same thing, but in a sandwich? Yeah, the same thing. Due to its simplicity and practicality, it can fill a lot of space. This used to be Cuba's go-to sandwich, especially in the 90s. Bread, fried croquette, and a little bit of ketchup. That's all you need here for a good time in your mouth. Mm. I like it, there's not much to say about it. It's simple, straightforward, soft bread, fried potato, a little bit of ketchup in there, a little bit of tomato kick at the end. It's not potato, it's made out of flour, meat. Potato. Not potato. It tastes potato way to me, it's I'm sorry. It's not potato. I'm so sorry, but man, this is filling. It is filling. All right, let's get some beers. I saw someone with beer over there. Let's check that out. Beer. Until just a few years ago, private restaurants in Cuba were illegal. Then, due to an economic crisis, the government made some reforms. And that's how Paladars were born. They are family or privately owned restaurants. Originally, they were run from people's homes, and many still are today. Like here, hidden away in the suburbs of Havana, right in front of the Paladar owner's home. Her home is right there. Sits Cafeteria a la Barbecue, a place where filmmakers and artists share ideas and grab some grub. This is Cuban diner food, served fast, making the most of what they have. Like their hamburger. Pan con hamburguesa. So bread with hamburger? Since beef is scarce, their burger patty is made with pork. I'm gonna try that right now. I like it a lot. I don't know if I've ever had like a pork patty for a burger, but that's really good. It's very juicy. This seems like Cuban fast food, yeah. but with good quality. Can she talk about how she prepares for the service? What is fast is how she prepares her team to act fast. Everything she prepared today, because her goal is 
keep everything fresh. Right. What do you got there? What I have here, we call masas de puerco. This dish epitomizes Cuban cuisine, at least in Oro's eyes. This is something that my mom used to make when I was a kid. Simple, yet colorful and seductive. Oh. A huge portion of rice, grilled pork chops, and in-season locally grown veggies and sides. This is a pork chop. Yeah. And you know, usually pork chop to me can be a little dry. But well, this is so good. It's so and juicy. Actually, yeah, but the way they make it here is super oily. But she has a balance between that, making not too dry, but still not too oily, which I love. To finish, dessert made inside a reused soda can. Right here, the thing that you're drinking here, they right. cut it, they put all the ingredients, they boil it. When they cool down, it becomes that thing that you're eating right there. That's really good. Oh, it's very sweet and velvety mm. soft on my tongue. Perfect way to end lunch. Cuba is a place of creation, expression, and fierce entrepreneurship, waiting to unleash its innovation. In this city, one hardly known Polydor is delivering seafood in a way completely unique to Cuba. Check it out. We're doing an interview in an inconvenient location, but it looks great. It works. It's okay. <laughs> Satisfied. Satisfied. Sir, what is the name of your restaurant? La Casa de Julio. And you are none other than Julio himself. Did you live here before it was converted into a place where people could come and eat? La Casa de la Familia. This was his family's house seven years ago. This is decided to convert into a restaurant because you can see it has a beautiful view. My understanding is that this is how the Paladar started. Yes. Right now, there is people owning restaurants, but back then that was impossible. So the first step was that family-owned concert. It was like a test. Can you tell me about what makes your restaurant so special? Nuestro restaurante. That when we get into the home, we don't feel like we are getting into a restaurant. He's inviting us to his house. He just wants us to be welcome. And what we are eating is what he will cook for his family. Sir, thank you so much. Yes. And yes. pause. And wide shots. Joining us at the table, Mr. Julio and his wife. It's a beautiful evening. I know we missed the sunset, but it still looks beautiful here. All the seafood cooked here comes right from the ocean. No, not the far away ocean. I'm talking about the patch of ocean in front of his home. The owner either catches it himself or has local fishermen do the deed, reeling in fresh fish like this tuna. His daughter and also our head chef mashes it up, then combines it with onions and mayonnaise to create a filling for these plantain cups. Slices of plantain are shaped and fried until crisp and filled with creamy tuna goodness. This is from a plantain, and then inside they put this wonderful tuna and mayonnaise. Go for it. Get it? Hmm. Bingo. Simple, delicious, crunchy, and then nice, rich tuna salad. If you cut it in oh, half, you got a cross section. This is made with CGI. You will put a laser so you can see how it's inside. Is it is a joke happening right now? Uh, okay. <laughs> Next on our menu, bite-sized sections of lobster tail cooked in a secret tomato chili sauce. Let's try this out. Mm. Thick, robust, delicious lobster tail. This is a, a tradition to put sweet potato with any seafood. Oh, really? The sweetness of the sweet potato with the sourness and the saltiness of the seafood. Let's get some tomato on there too. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna try it out. I like that. And it kind of draws out the experience too. Usually I just kind of down the whole lobster tail in two seconds. But I like that. Our final dish, garbanzo bean seafood soup. This thing is stuffed with seafood. There's so much seafood in here. Julio tried it in Spain during a holiday and has been cooking it ever since. But with his own twist, he's replaced unavailable ingredients like Spanish ham with seafood he caught in his backyard. They cook it all in a big pot with a secret blend of spices. Garbanzo beans, beer, tomato sauce, and garlic paste. Okay, hold on. I guess it's not really secret after all. I gotta dislodge some of this so I can get down to the broth for you, bro. You're not pretending me to eat that whole thing, right? This is for you, man. You're the guest of honor. I mean the the, the hand, how you call the crab the, hand? The, yeah, we just call it crab hand. Well, no, we call it crab hand. Well, the crab hand. How you how you eat the crab hand? Ah, I see right here. Oh, you see? Tech, we got technology right here. Here we go. Oh. That right there, best meat in the whole Bro. crab. Try it out. Hmm? Mm, you got it. 
I've never seen a dish that has more seafood and more variety. Like every bite is a little different flavor, different texture. There's just so much in there. Can I ask how much that costs? Because I know in the US, if you got that at a, a decent restaurant, I'm like, I don't know, in the US it's probably like $25, $30 for just for that. How much is this It costs $6. That's ridiculous. He said that it's a hook, the right hook. Yeah. yeah. He's proud of me. <laughs> I love that. This is so fun. So just want to say one more time, mucho gracias. Adapt and overcome. This is the ethos felt around Havana. From pizza to five-star seafood, what really makes Cuba work isn't the ingredients, it's heart. Hey guys, before you go, I wanted to read some of your comments. TWA says, great content, stupid channel name. Oh. Augusto Ceilings says, this is dumb. You and your channel are sh Oh. Patrick Bateman commented, f your stupid channel. Oh. There's too much hate in the world right now. The things you say matter. So next time, don't spread insults, don't spread hate. Spread cheese. Do you think I was gonna say love? No, cheese. Spread cheese, you can put it on anything, it's awesome. This is a message so important that we decided to put it on a t-shirt that you can buy now. How was that? I think that could all be cut together. Mm. One take? One take. All right, good, cut. From researching and shooting to editing and mastering, our 10-person best ever food review show team works hard to roll out the highest quality travel food entertainment twice a week. If you like what we do here, please consider supporting our Patreon. Patreon allows fans of the show to contribute a monthly sum and receive a load of extras like early video releases, private Q&As, and beyond. To learn more about our Patreon, check out the link in the description box down below. And if you can't give or don't even feel like it, that's okay too. <laughs> We're just happy you're here. That's it for Oro. Guys, check out Oro on Instagram. That's his main platform of interest. He does all kinds of artistic endeavors. It's quite a treat. Oro, thank you so much. That is it for this one, guys. I will see you next time. A peace. A peace.